Hello. Good morning. Hello. How is everybody? Let's check this out. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, Renan Nova. Hello, Bushra. Hello, Amani. Oh, or Harris. Hello, Isabel. Hello, Nico. Hello, Clem and Gilly. Hello, Kieran and Keely and Lucas. Woo, hello. Wonderful to see you all. Oh, here I am chilling out in Mexico today. Mexico. Hello, Lily and Jacob. Good morning, Eden and Sky. Oh, hello, Eva. My weekend was wonderful, thank you. Very Christmassy this weekend. <laughs> Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, we've got quite a lot to get through today. Mexico is quite a, quite a busy place, it would seem. Uh, so it should be good. <laughs> oh, look, Armani and Harris say hello to Lily and Jacob. Good morning. Oh, no, Clem and Giddy can't hear me. Mm, okay, let me see. Is that on my end or is it on your end? Let's find out. Uh, I think it's working all right this end. Um, uh, ah, Lily and Jacob say hello back. Let me see. Oh, look, Armani was supposed to go to Mexico for a wedding. But of course, this year, there wasn't much travel, was there? Uh, good morning, Ibrahim. Hello, Danny. Oh, hi to Danny from Renan Nova. Ooh, there we go. Uh, Isabel can hear me. OK, hopefully. Oh, hello, fellow human, Jazzy. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it's working for everyone now. Let's see. Right, I'll get started because, well... Like I say, we've got a lot to get through. Today, we're going to Mexico. Now, for those of you who are joining for the first time, um, ooh, what seems like a very long time ago now, we started going through uh, countries of the world in alphabetical order. And today we've got to the letter M <gasps> ooh, for Mexico. And Mexico is in North America. We've only been to North America once before, I think, in these lessons. We went there with eight, H and Haiti. Here we are. Um, but here we are. Mexico's rather bigger than Haiti. Um, and it's in an interesting place because it's kind of the link between the USA and the other countries of Central and then South, South America. So it's in an interesting place geographically for sure. Now, why can't I see my chat? That's not very helpful, is it? Oh, there we go. I think it's going to do that thing where it makes me click it every time. Oh, I don't like that thing. Um, here's the flag of Mexico here. We'll come to that in a minute when we look at wildlife, because as you can see, it's got some cool animals on it. It's got an eagle and a snake. Yes. Mm, tasty snake. Uh, but we'll explain that when we get to the wildlife bit. Um, in fact, we've got quite a lot of wildlife this morning, which is nice. Mexico's good for wildlife. Um, <laughs> so that what we got here, Amani says, all she knows about Mexico is that they eat tacos and they speak a bit of Spanish. That's true. They do speak Spanish in Mexico. That's right. Um, Mexico, although it's in the Americas and although it's the, the neighbor of the USA where they speak English, um, it itself is a Spanish speaking country, like many countries of the world. Um, and of course, that's all to do with history and uh, the fact that it was the Spanish who conquered Mexico um, first. So that's where we get our language from. Ah, Ibrahim's best friend is from, or one of his friends is from Mexico. That's very cool. That's very cool indeed. Uh -huh. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by looking at the physical map here. Here we've got a map of the states of Mexico. Um, some of which may be familiar to you. I don't know. Some of these words might be familiar. Um, some words that we may have heard from the states of Mexico. Let's think. Oh, here we are at the top. Chihuahua. You might have heard of a Chihuahua. In fact, I've got a picture of a cute Chihuahua later. Um, we've got Tabasco, if you like spicy sauce. Yeah, that comes from the state of Tabasco. But as you can see, there's a lot of different states. Um, some of them are up in the north 
where it's a bit cooler, uh, but drier maybe. Some of them are down in the south where it starts to go down towards a very nice jungle um, all the way down here. So it's got a nice mix of places and a lot of uh, a good mix of climates in Mexico too. And it is quite huge. Yeah, Amana says um, it's a huge country. It is pretty big. Yeah. Definitely. Um, it's quite long and narrow, and I suppose compared to the USA, it's not so big because that's humongous. Um, but yes, it is It is one of the larger countries in the world for sure. And I quite like the fact that when I look at it and I think of the shape of it, it kind of reminds me of a Christmas stocking or something. Um, some kind of some kind of strange sock or boot. Mm. Um, oh, why do so many names start with C? I don't know. That's an interesting question. Uh, they seem to, yeah, uh, in our northern states, we've got Chihuahua and Huila. Um, we've got uh, Campeche. I'm awful at Spanish pronunciation, as you can tell. Uh, but there are lots of C's, aren't there? Yes. Now, the capital city is pretty much smack bang in the, in the middle of the country. Mexico City uh, new, used to be called. Uh, it is shaped, yeah, it's about, it is kind of shaped like Italy, but you know, the toes going the other way. Yeah, it's similar, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, Noah has mentioned the Day of the Dead, and we will come to that too. Yes, I haven't forgotten about that. That's a good, that's a good shout, uh, Noah. Um, so yeah, Mexico City, kind of in the middle, used to be called Xenochitlan by the people who lived there originally, the Aztec people. Um, and it's a huge city, um, one of the biggest cities in the world. It is, in fact, what we call a mega city, which means there's more than 10 million people that live in that one town. Well, city. It's huge. Massive. Um, mm, Isabel asks, how many states are there? I don't know. I haven't given them a count. Um, oh, I don't know. There's a few. Hmm. Ah, Bethan's Spanish teacher lives in Mexico. That would make sense. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so let's look over here. Well, I'll have to count the states at some point, but yeah, I, I won't do it now. I think that'd be a, a bit boring listen to me count, wouldn't it? <laughs> So here's a, what we call the relief map or the physical map of Mexico too. So if we take all the states out and we just sort of look at the landscape, this is what we see. Um, the green land is the lowest land. So the land that's, you know, we can see it borders the ocean. But the center of Mexico, this sort of central trunk, is really, really mountainous and hilly. Uh, you can see some beautiful Mexican mountains behind me in my camera, hopefully. Um, but a lot of Mexico is like that. It's tall, high mountains, hills, bit rugged. Um, and the low lying land is on the sides here. Um, our little peninsula that comes out the side is a bit lower. Yeah, not quite so rocky and mountainous. And then we've got this area up here, the Yucatan, which is quite low and nice and jungly down there as well, or a lot of it is. So it's a very varied country because it goes from quite a long way uh, north to quite a long way south. Um, and the more distance we, we cover from north to south, the more our climate changes. Um, you know, there's a big difference between uh, England and Spain, say, and the distance between the north of Mexico and the south of Mexico is similar to that distance. So you can imagine there would be a lot of difference between the climates, with the temperatures. Ah, Run and Nova have done a bit of research here. 31 states and one federal dist district in Mexico. Thank you, Run. Thank you, Nova. That's very kind. Um, uh, yeah, that, and, and Rox pointed out there's just mountains everywhere. Yeah, lots of mountains. That's it. So yeah, the, 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 more, the more brown we get, the sort of darker color that means the higher the mountains so you can see that they sort of start off as low hills to the sides and then as we get in that north that, that central strip they do get pretty big um now let's uh let's have a look at how the climate changes here we have a rather confusing and very very pretty map which shows some of the different types of climate or different types of vegetation and things of, of landscape biomes that we would find in Mexico. And you can see there's a huge amount here. Um, we've got everything from uh, at the center of the country here where those, where those hills sort of 
start leaving into mountains. We've got it like it's the hot summer Mediterranean. I imagine a summer holiday in the south of France or in Spain or Portugal, somewhere like that. That's what it would be like along here. Um, then we've got areas of this light blue color of savanna, which is short grasses. Oh, hello, Declan. <laughs> yeah, you're with me now. That's good. Good morning. Um, we've got tropical forests sort of down in the south, which is very cool. We've got rainforests stretching out in the very south as we're heading down into further into Central America. We've got hot desert. So imagine cacti and sand and all that kind of stuff, big chunks of hot desert. Um, we've even got a chunk of cold desert, which is, oh, hello, Leon. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, good morning, Kai. Uh, I cannot hear you, but you should be able to hear me. That's how it works. So there you go. Yeah. Um, uh, where is the... Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Isabel is pointing out, hang on, where's the ice cap? Where's the tundra? They aren't on here. Um, this is all of the, the possible climates that we could have. And no, there is no tundra. That means icy soil. And there's no ice cap. We'd have to go to Antarctica or the Arctic for that. So yeah, we can't see them on, on our, on, on our, in Mexico. But I think pretty much every other colour is there. So it just tells you that you could travel around Mexico and you could experience, it'd be like doing a little world tour almost. It'd be like heading from place to place and you'd have different animals and different plants and different uh, temperatures and different amounts of rain in different places. Uh, quite exciting, I think. You could, you could get a lot out of a, of a long trip to Mexico for sure. Hmm. But you must be a little bit careful because all those mountains um, oh, what is a cold desert? That's a good question. Thank you, Hannah. A cold desert is a desert. Well, a desert just means a place that doesn't get much rain, very little at all. And if we think of our traditional deserts like the Sahara Desert, that's definitely a hot desert. It doesn't get any rain and it's hot and it's dry. Ooh. Um, but sometimes those deserts, the places where we get no rain, it can be very cold. So that's what our cold desert is. It's, you know, being there, it, it's not freezing in Mexico, but it's certainly not very hot, but it's also very dry. So it's kind of like dry and mild, I guess. Yeah, would be a good way to describe it. So it's just a desert that isn't very warm. <laughs> there you are. Um, oh, where, where it says Köpen, why does the zero have uh, the O have eyes? I don't know. I think this is for, this is a map from I don't know maybe somewhere in Denmark or something. Uh, I'm not sure what the Köppen climate type means. Maybe that's someone's name. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, is Mexico in North or South America? Good question. It's definitely in North America. Um, if we go back uh, briefly, then to our original map of the world, I can show you the difference between North and South. Here we go. So. On this map, our North American countries are all in blue. So Greenland, Canada, USA, Mexico, and these group of countries down here, plus all the Caribbean islands, lots of them, they're all North America. But then as soon as we get down to Panama and we cross to Colombia, that's where it gets green and green on our map is South America. So that's how we, we divide them up. So North America in the blue, South America in the greeny colors, which is very nice. There we are. Hopefully that cleared that up. Um, so like I was saying, it's not always particularly safe in Mexico. Oh, we'll come back to that in a second. Because all those mountains, some of them are a little bit moody. And what do we say when it's a moody mountain? We call it a volcano. So this is a map of the volcanoes in and around Mexico. And there are a lot. Uh, these are the ones that are particularly active. There are there are more than this for sure. But um, we've got Vulcan de San Martin over here, which I like because that's named after uh, the Roman god of volcanoes. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got quite a lot of volcanoes pretty close to the capital. So I'm going to try and say this one. Uh, Popa Capital is very close um, to there. Oh, wow, look, Amelia and Benjamin say that their mum have been to see Papa, Papa Capetel. <laughs> That's very cool. I bet she can say it better than I can. <laughs> I'd like to see it, that's for sure. Um, uh, yes, there is a volcano behind me. <laughs> that's true. 
Um, uh, so uh, Hannah asks, what's the lowest temperature in Mexico? Uh, and here we've got Mexico City. So this is the capital. And it gives us an idea of the, the average temperatures, both the highest temperature, which we usually find in the daytime, of course, and the lowest temperature that we tend to find in the night. So in the center of Mexico, Mexico City, it's always around 20 to 30 degrees. That's kind of, you know, the, 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 the climate that we've got, the temperature we've got. It can drop down to something like five, six degrees at its coldest. But in Mexico City, it never gets colder than that. So we're not having any ice in Mexico City. There's no snow. Um, it's always pretty warm. I mean, maybe five, six degrees doesn't sound too warm, but it's warmer than it is here today yeah, around me. <laughs> um, when it comes to rainfall in Mexico City, they have quite a rainy or a relatively rainy summer. So in May, we start to get the rain, June, July, August, quite a lot of rain, September, and then it drops down in October, meaning that the winter, November, December, January, February, March, um, is pretty dry. Um, and the temperatures don't change massively. You'll notice that in the middle of winter, our, our coldest month of January, it's uh, pretty much the same. It's not far off July. Yeah, there isn't a massive difference in the temperature there, in the max temperature. Hmm. Oh, Hannah asked, when is their Christmas? Exactly the same time as ours. Yeah, there you go. Well, if you're in the UK, it's the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, and Rock watched a video on uh, Popocatel, <laughs> that, that cool volcano. That's good. I don't know much about that volcano individually. Um, I know there's lots of volcanoes in Mexico, which is brilliant because traditionally the people who used to live you know, back in the olden times, the ancient times, they used to use um, materials from these volcanoes to make tools and weapons and jewelry, um, beautiful things out of obsidian is this really shiny black um, stone which you get out of volcanoes or when the lava dries you get it dries that's a bit of a strange word isn't it when it cools down um, but obsidian if you uh, the the traditional uh, American people people like the Aztecs and the Maya they would use obsidian for weapons because you can sharpen it sharper than you can steel so a modern razor blade cannot be made quite as sharp as a bit of ancient obsidian. Uh, the only problem with that is as soon as you uh, use it to chop down a tree or whatever, um, it loses its point pretty quick. So uh, you can find lots of gems there as well. Yes. Um, what do they have? They have a lot of jade in Mexico. Um, and yeah, man, that's right. Yeah, obsidian is in Minecraft. That's true. Yeah. 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 And of course, you make it, I think in Minecraft. I think you make it out of lava, don't you? So that would make sense. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, I've got a question here. What do they eat in Mexico? We'll come to that when we get to culture. All right. So let's take a peek at some wildlife. Oh, I'm all over the place today. Look, I'm not used to, to going through these ones anymore. Here we are. So I've got here a collection of creatures that we will find in Mexico. Um, <laughs> tamales that's right and tacos <laughs> um yeah down in the the south in particular of mexico we will find beautiful animals like the jaguar um which is one of the top predators at least the top land predators of mexico um jaguars they roam or they range all the way from mexico through central america down into south america and the amazon rainforest and yeah they're very cool creatures um very strong, very fast, very powerful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Mexico also uh, is pretty famous for its dogs. Uh, two particular kinds of dogs here. Um, these little ones, these very cute ones, these are chihuahuas, which of course we have the state named Chihuahua, so that may kind of make sense. Uh, very cute and fluffy. Mm, I love this one in particular. It's, it's got such a little cute little nose. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the most famous dog um, is this one here, and this is its name. It's the uh, whatever that says. It's shortened to the Zolo dog. Mm -hmm. Now, the Zolo dog is very, very cool because it has no hair. It is not a furry dog. It is not a fluffy dog. It is not a poofy dog. 
it is a very, very naked dog. It's kind of like a sausage or something. Um, and so the Zolo dog is one of the most famous and beloved dogs of Mexico. It is in fact their national dog, not the, quite their national animal, That's we'll, we'll come to that in a second, but it is one of their national animals. Um, and it is certainly their national dog. And you can see it here. Uh, I imagine in the hot climate of Mexico, you don't really need fur to stay warm, do you? So there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, can I spell that? Oh, oh, a, a Zolo dog here. Uh, X O L O is Zolo. Yes. Uh, they are cute, aren't they, Jesse? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, these are its. Uh, uh, somebody's pointing out what you can see on this naked dog. Uh, these are her nipples here, that she uses to feed her babies. There you go. <laughs> um, now, the national animal, the most important animal of Mexico, if you like is reserved for the golden eagle. Um, and here she is, this fine golden eagle. And we can tell that she's really important to Mexico because here she is on the flag. Now the flag of Mexico is one of the most interesting ones in terms of the details. Um, <laughs> we've got here uh, an eagle eating a snake sat on a cactus, the cactus is on some kind of piece of wood in the middle of what looks like a kind of blue splash. Hmm. Ooh, golden eagle versus chicken of France. Who would win? <gasps> I don't know. That that French chicken is pretty powerful. That national animal of France. Yeah, that chicken. Hmm. It's definitely got some. It's, it's got the right attitude, doesn't it, to be a contender? Although the golden eagle, in almost every way, physically, is better. Um. I don't mean to abuse or, or otherwise upset the chicken of France, but the golden eagle is one of the world's most efficient predators. They can see for miles. They can fly fast and high. They can dive at 100 miles an hour and they can catch a mouse before the mouse even knows it exists. So I don't know. I think the chicken of France would lose. But if it used its brains, maybe, maybe a chicken of France has brains, whereas an eagle doesn't. I don't know. I haven't met them both properly. Mm -hmm. um, so why have we got the golden eagle eating a snake on a cactus? This goes back to, well, the reason that Mexico is called Mexico, I suppose. There were a group of people um, a few hundred years ago now who lived in Mexico before Christopher Columbus and uh, the Europeans came. And they called themselves the Mexica. Mexica. Um, now, that sounds a lot like Mexico, doesn't it? Mexico, Mexica. Now we don't call them the Mexica normally. We call them the Aztecs. Yeah, so you've probably heard of the Aztecs, even if you haven't heard of the Mexica. But the Mexica, as they called themselves, they believed that they were the ones who built Mexico City. They didn't call it Mexico City, they called it Tenochtitlan. But when they built it, they, the, the legend goes, they were wandering around, they had come from the north somewhere, and they were looking for somewhere to start a civilization, to build a city. And they decided to look for a sign from the gods. Ooh. Um, oh, this is a good question from Amani. That's, um, can you find the eagles in other places, not Mexico? Yes, you can find golden eagles all over the place. Um, we've seen a few countries with golden eagles, uh, Kazakhstan and America, uh, USA, I mean. Uh, are there other places? Yes, I, I think they go as high up as Canada. So yeah, you can find golden eagles in a lot of places, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, now who would win between the chicken of France, the eagle of Mexico, and the lion and unicorn of England and Scotland? That's a good one. Yes. I st the golden eagle still got, got the edge because it can fly, I guess. It's the only one of those four that can. <laughs> um, so our, our Mexica the Aztecs, they're looking for somewhere to, to, build a temp, to build a city. And they come across this great big lake, humongous lake it is. And as they're going by it, there's, there's some islands in the lake. And all of a sudden, down from the sky swoops this golden eagle. And in its mouth or claws, it has this ginormous snake and it's gobbling it up. And it lands in the middle of the lake on this cactus, on this little island. And the Mashika go, aha, that means we need to build our city there. 
The gods are obviously showing us the way. Follow the eagle, follow the eagle. And so that's where they started building their city. And well, let's have a look at that city now, I suppose. Oh, oh no, we got ocelots first. We'll come to the city in a second. I forgot about the ocelots. Um, ocelots, I, I put these pictures here just because they're absolutely cute. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just having a cute animal, are they? They're a bit smaller than jaguars, but they're just as deadly, or they can be, um, especially if we're attacking smaller things. And as you may know, um, ocelots, I think, are the only thing that creepers are afraid of in Minecraft. So maybe it's because they're just so cute. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, now, that's true. I haven't done the USA yet, have I? Um, but you can find golden eagles there. Yes. So, yeah, our ocelots, very cute, I, especially this little baby one here. Cud they look kind of cuddly. I wouldn't try and cuddle one, though, Amana, um, because I think they're definitely little predators. They might, they wouldn't be as, as, as sweet as a pet cat. Maybe a pet, maybe a complete baby one, a kitten would be, but I, I wouldn't tangle with this guy. Um, she looks very cute, but at the same time, she's a bit frightening. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Look, Declan has an ocelot, an ocelot man as his Minecraft skin. That's pretty cool. Mm, sounds good. Um, here's the creature that I uh, was going to get, thought was coming next, though. Um, this is the axolotl. It's so cute. Um, these things are amazing little amphibians that live only in Mexico. Uh, all of the other animals we've just looked at, most of them, I think the Zolo dog is just purely Mexican. Most of them live in other creatures in other countries too. But, um, oh, how do you spell that? How do I spell that? I'm going to have to Google it. Hang on. Axolotl. Axolotl. I think I know how to do it. Oh, I did get it right. Oh, that's, that's sweet. Uh, here we are. I can copy paste it, make it a bit faster. Here we go. Here's our axolotl. I'll try and I'll put it up there. Now, these things are incredibly rare, um, at least incredibly rare. Oh, no, I've zoomed out by accident. The demon double click. There we go. Um, when the, the Mexica first came to Mexico, they settled in the lake. Yeah, that's where they saw the bird. Oh, hang on. Now, this lake is pretty impressive. It's near volcanoes, as we've seen. So the land around it is very fertile, full of lovely uh, soil that you can grow your crops on. There's also a massive island in the middle of the lake, which means that this is where they built their city. It's a clever place to build a city because if someone wants to attack you, and the Mashika had a lot of enemies, because they tended to keep stealing people and sacrificing them to their gods, which makes you a lot of enemies, I must say. But they were quite safe on their lake. Uh, they built these huge causeways uh, like roads that, that left that came up out of the lake. They built these to get in and out of the city. But it was very easy if someone who wanted to attack you, as long as you put a few soldiers, a few guards on each of these uh, bridges, these causeways, then they're not going to get to you, are they? It's a very safe place to be. And it's one of two lakes in the world where the axolotl live. They live in this lake and they live in another lake a little bit further to the south. Now, the problem is nobody has found an axolotl in the wild for the last seven years. Seven years this creature's been missing. Oh dear. Because they only come from two lakes. Um, oh yeah, Rock points out there are some houses. Yeah, there's kind of like houses and buildings on the causeways and these little semi-islands coming off as well. Yes. Oh, Declan says that the axolotl is going to be in Minecraft too. Maybe Minecraft is Mexican. There's a lot of connections, isn't there? Mm. Um, so, oh, I've got a question here. What's their religion? We'll come to that in a minute as well. So two lakes in the world, both of them in Mexico, that the axolotl lives in. A few years ago, the Mexican government decided that one of those lakes needed to be filled in to make way for building and, and, and agriculture. So they just took loads of stuff, dumped it in the lake. There is no lake anymore. So the axolotls cannot live there. Oh dear. And our Tenochtitlan, which the Aztecs built, which is now called Mexico City, well, today it looks like this. Can anyone spot the lake? It's there somewhere. 
underneath all the houses and roads. Um, so the lake still technically exists, but it's under the city now. They've built up on, above and over the lake, which means our poor axolotls, well, they're not really designed to live under a city. They're designed to live in a nice blue lake like this one. Not so much a lake when it's covered in homes. That's not so good. Um, so that means that perhaps we've lost the axolotl to get all together. There are plenty in zoos and that are being looked after, but in the wild, like I say, for seven years, nobody's found one. And that's a bit, a bit worrying, yeah. Uh, the last time they did find them, seven years ago, they were living under the city. So I don't know, maybe they're still down there holding out, but I think what they really need is for someone to make them a new lake so that they can go and live there and uh, enjoy themselves. Hmm, a bit sad, but they are super cute. Hopefully they'll, they'll stick around for some time yet. Um, oh, Declan says the Minecraft is based in Sweden, so not Mexico. Um, uh, Rock says, can they breathe underwater? Yes, they're little amphibious species. Yes. Um, I just love their frills. I mean, it's just really cool, isn't it? It looks like a Pokemon or something. It doesn't quite look real. Um, there you go. Uh, one last animal here, uh, just because it's cool is the spider monkey. So spider monkeys live in Mexico too, hanging around in the trees, having loads of fun, um, doing whatever spider monkeys do. Yay. <laughs> ah, uh, now uh, somebody's asked me the mystery, their name is mystery, has asked me because they live on a volcano, how do they know if the volcano is going to erupt? Um, a lot of places in the world, they reckon that about 10% of the world population live within striking range of a volcano. Um, but yes, it, you never know if a volcano is going to erupt. Usually, you know, most volcanoes will only erupt once every 100 years or 50 years, something like that. And usually, like, like Mexico City, it's near volcanoes, but it's not like on it. It hasn't got a volcano in the middle of the city. So if it does erupt, it won't cause too much trouble, but it can do. And if they get a really big, bad eruption, then it could destroy a lot of houses and people and things. Um, but um, yeah, I, th I think so far they've been OK, for sure. Um, they get a lot of earthquakes, too, of course, because if you're in a volcano area, you're going to get earthquakes as well. Um, so the earthquakes cause more damage to Mexico City than um, than volcanoes do. Yes. Uh, oh, here's a good question. Why are they called spider monkeys? I think it's because they've got such long limbs and tail and they're kind of dark colored and they're incredibly quick at climbing. So they kind of, you know, they leap up and down trees, kind of like a spider would scurry around. Yes. I don't think there's anything other than that. They don't like shoot web or anything. They're not like Spider-Man. Mm, no, just spider monkeys. <laughs> why are they so stretchy? Why? Um, I don't know why they're so stretchy. That's just that's just how the spider monkey is. Yes. <laughs> um, Nico's asking, how many arms do they have? Only two arms. Uh, they've got two legs down here. Look, <laughs> two arms. It's just and a very long tail. And this guy is using all four of his limbs and his tail to hold on to this tree. You know, it looks. It is incredible, really, isn't it? Uh, a very dexterous creature. Hmm. Um, I've got a couple more questions here about the axolotl. What do they eat and are they venomous? I don't know. I don't think they're venomous, but then I don't know. That'd be a, an interesting thing to research. Um, I believe they eat little plants and things in the water. Um, I don't think they're venomous, but maybe someone knows. Maybe someone can tell me in the chat if they are venomous or not. Hmm. Whilst we head on, to our government. Da, 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 da. So this very fancy looking guy is Lopez Obrador, and he is the president of Mexico. Ah, thank you, Freya. Freya says they are not venomous. Hmm, there you go, not venomous, too cute to be venomous. Hmm. Um, uh, <laughs> Amani says, not Donald Trump. No, Donald Trump is definitely not Mexican. Um, he would definitely take offense at that, wouldn't he? Cool. You know what he's like. Yeah. Um, but no, no, this is the president of Mexico. And of course, as president of Mexico, they do have to be on good terms with the president of America, which has been tricky in recent years. Um, uh, over the last few decades, there's been quite a few presidents of Mexico and they've all had, well, they've got some problems to deal with. Um, 
the biggest problem in Mexico at the moment, or one of the biggest problems, is crime. Mexico is a place where there's lots of gang fights, and, and some people say it's technically home to the longest running war at the moment, um, because there are lots of gangs, especially towards the south and central Mexico, um, who are constantly fighting each other. Um, and that leads to a lot of problems, a lot of problems with uh, violence and theft and things like that. Um, part of the reason for that is because Mexico is a very poor country or a relatively poor country. We'll look at the GDP per capita in a minute, guys, don't worry, that's coming. Um, but because it's quite a poor country, you get a lot of desperate people who end up joining gangs to try and make money. And so the presidents, when they come along, they always or they usually try and stamp out crime. That's their main job. Um, now, the American president, Donald Trump at the moment, but soon Joe Biden, one of their uh, concerns is to try and stop people from Mexico coming to the USA. Uh, some presidents don't mind if people come from Mexico to the USA to live. Other presidents like, no, you're not allowed over. And so the two presidents of those countries, they do have to you know, talk to each other quite a lot to work out ways to either stop or not stop people coming from Mexico to America. That was a very complicated sentence, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so this president here, yes, he was elected in 2018 and his main thing is fighting crime. And I've got an interesting graph to show you, which will explain why that's such a big priority. So this is not about GDP, this one here. This graph shows the number of murders in a country. Oh my goodness. Oh, hello, baby sister of Noah. Hello. Hello, cute baby. I assume you're cute. You're a baby. You must be. Um, so um, this graph shows us three countries and how many people get murdered each year in crime. Oh dear. So the UK is pretty low down. Um, out of every 100,000 people in the country, one of them will get murdered every year. So in other words, you've got, if it was completely random, you'd have a one in 100,000 chance of getting murdered, Ooh, which is really very low, yeah? Um, now, if we go to a country which is famous for having lots of guns and things, you might have heard about that, about the USA. In, in the, the USA, they have five times as many murders as the UK. Five in every 100,000 people in the USA get murdered every year. Ooh, that sounds pretty bad. That's like five times as dangerous. But then we look at Mexico. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. That's very high. Very high indeed. Um, so 29 out of every 100,000 people. And that's not because the people of Mexico are evil. They're not all just walking around murdering each other. It's not like, haha, we're Mexicans, so we like murder. No, that's not how it works. Um, and it's because, like I say, there's a lot of gangs and these gangs are very violent and they attack each other and they have got gang wars and gang fights. And that leads to a lot of people dying. We don't really have that in the USA, in, in, in the UK. They don't really have that in the US either. Um, but in Mexico, these gangs are fighting each other. And so it makes that crime rate go really high. And that's what the president has to deal with. How is he going to stop everyone fighting amongst themselves? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I personally would send them to their rooms, but I don't think that works for the president. Or maybe it would work. I just have to talk to the president. Yeah, maybe I'll send him a letter, an email. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll sort it out. All right, now the moment that we've all been waiting for. Ooh, here we go. It's the economy and development. Um, oh, hello, baby Iris. Hello. <laughs> um, so, yeah, economy and development. Here we look at the GDP per capita. Oh, Mystery is asking me what language they speak in Mexico. It's Spanish. Spanish in Mexico. Yes. Um, See. Si. Um, so what we do to work out how rich a country is, or at least one way of working out how rich a country is, is that we take all the money that all the people make in the year, we take it all and we put it in a great big pot, and then we imagine we're doing this. We share it out equally amongst all the people in the country. And the number that we're left with is an indication of how well off that the people in that country are. Uh, that was a weird sentence too. So in Britain, 
if we did that, if we divide up all the money amongst all the people, we'd be somewhere around $42,000 a year each person would get. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone does have $42,000. Uh, and we use dollars because it's a standard that we can attach to the rest of the world as well. But it means that if we were to share everything out equally, we'd have $42,000 a year each, which is pretty good. That's a lot of money. You can do a lot with that. Um, if we go down to Liberia, which was the poorest country we've got, we're looking at barely... Uh, barely two thousand dollars a year you know, so it's a big difference the people of liberia it's a poor country mexico is somewhere in the middle here we're looking at just just shy of 10 so we're looking at 9.8 so nearly ten thousand dollars per person per year which means that they have about a, a quarter of the amount of money as the people of the uk do so if you live in Britain right now and you're thinking, I'm not very rich. Hmm. Well, think about someone in Mexico who has a quarter of the money that your family does, and that will give you an idea. Um, so Mexico, it's quite a poor country. It's not the poorest. We've seen a few poorer ones, haven't we? Liberia, Haiti and Ethiopia are our developing countries, which are still very, very poor. We've got our rich countries from Greece upwards. These are our developed countries with modern schools and hospitals and roads and banks and all that kind of stuff. And then in the middle, we have China, Mexico, Kazakhstan, Brazil and India. These countries are what we call emerging. They're getting richer. They're getting there. Um, but they've still got a long way to go if they want to be as wealthy as the countries at the top here. And ever since we've we've did the fourth, the fourth one of these one D for Denmark, Denmark has been in the lead. They are. Yeah, they're, they're crazy wealthy as Denmark, if, if we share it all out. There you are. So Denmark is the top, Australia second, and at the moment, UK third. Hmm. And of course, every, next week, we're going to do another country. We're going to do Nigeria, and we'll see where that falls on this graph as well. Nigeria in Africa. Hmm. Um, and by the end, we should have 26 countries, shouldn't we? I guess. Hmm. Um, so... What I did think I'd do, we haven't done the USA, but I thought that this was probably important to show us. Since these two are our neighbors, uh, the USA and Mexico, it's probably worth comparing the two. So these countries, you know, you, you only have to walk or swim across a river or walk down a road and you're, you've gone from one to the other, from the USA to Mexico or vice versa. And there's a massive difference. As soon as you cross that line, you cross from one of the richest countries in the world, $62,000 per person per year if they, if they shared it all out. I mean, that's incredibly rich country is the USA. Um, you compare that with little old Mexico though, not quite $10,000 per person. And you can see that there's a big, big difference. Um, uh, isn't that country? Oh, we, we will talk about Nigeria next time. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll see where Nigeria fits. You might be surprised. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's looking it's looking like there's a massive difference here, which leads to problems between the two countries, because a lot of people in Mexico, they want to move to the United States of America because the United States of America has loads of money. They're a rich country, whereas Mexico is a very poor country. And so if you can imagine living in Mexico, especially if you're a particularly poor person in Mexico, and maybe if you're, you know, you're from one of those areas where, where they've got gangs and crime, you might think, oh, I don't want to live here. I want to go and live somewhere safer. Now, having said that, there are lots of really wonderfully safe parts of, of Mexico. Uh, if you went on holiday to Mexico, you wouldn't see all the, all the gangs fighting each other and stuff like that. Uh, they do that in different areas where there's not holiday makers usually. So, but if you're someone from one of those more rough areas of Mexico, you might want to leave and go and live in the USA. But at the same time, the United States, it doesn't really want people from Mexico coming over, or at least a lot of people don't, some people do. Um, and they don't want the people coming over because they say, oh, these people from Mexico, they're just, they're criminals. Oh, we've seen their crime rates, blah, 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 blah. So it, it gets really tricky. And of course, famously, Donald Trump started to build a great big wall to, to keep the Mexicans out. Um, 
it'd be interesting to see in the next few years what happens with that and whether that changes. But at the moment, it's very diff difficult to get from Mexico to the USA. Um, and that's how the Americans like it at the moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mystery wants to live somewhere. There's a lot of famous YouTubers. I think there are some from Mexico, aren't there? Um, I'm not big on YouTubers, but I think there are some big ones from Mexico. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, Nazarene says, is Mexico a really poor country? As, as we saw there on our thing, compared to the USA, it is a very poor country. Compared to other countries, it's doing quite well. I mean, it's still, uh, Mexico here is richer than Kazakhstan, Brazil, India, Ethiopia, Haiti, and Liberia. So it's not the poorest country in the world by any means, but compared to America, it's just that huge difference. Usually when we have really rich countries, they're next to really rich countries and the poor countries are next to really poor countries. It's not very often that we see one of the richest countries in the world next to a very poor one, you know, and that's, that's why it's kind of strange. You've got the people from the poor country who want to get to the rich country to to have a better life. Um, somebody asked what kind of jobs they do in Mexico. Um, most kinds of jobs, really. Uh, I mean, you can get very posh jobs like being a plastic surgeon or a doctor or a, a lawyer. But you can also get, you know, more uh, less skilled jobs like being a farmer or working in a mine and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yes, you can. You can just walk through the wall. That's it, run over. They haven't, didn't quite make it uh, uh, amazingly brilliant, did they? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that, that gives us a bit of tension. Having a rich country next to a poor country is something that can lead to problems, for sure. Right. Uh, our next stop is to take a look at some of the culture. And again, with Mexico, there's a lot of different culture going on. I started here with a picture of food and drink because I imagine that you will, will be familiar with some of these foods. Here we've got nachos, jalapenos, good Mexican word there, or Spanish word. We've got guacamole, that's a good Mexican food. We've got um, uh, tortillas, we've got tacos, uh, we've got... Um, well, we've got chilies here, very hot. We've got the drink tequila. Um, uh, lots of seafood as well, especially around the coast here. We've got chili. Uh, if you've heard of chili con carne, something like that. Lime juice is a big thing. Um, so the chances are you've eaten some Mexican food. Yeah. Um, lots of the time it's very spicy, but not, all, or not always. Um, here we've got hard tacos here. Um, Yes, there's lots of different variations on what you can do with hard and soft wraps in Mexican food. So you can have like enchiladas or chimichongas or you know all kinds of stuff. Um, ah, Nico's telling me that Qatar's GDP is 124,000. Yeah, that's one of the richer countries in the world for sure. <laughs> uh, wow, well, what we do Qatar? Hmm. Uh, uh, we'll have to come down to the UAE at some point, won't we? We'll have to get down there, down to that area. Hmm. Um, so, oh, I mean, Amana asks, what would rich be considered in Mexico? How much money? So even though it's a relatively poor country, some people in Mexico are millionaires. You know, they're really, really rich. And some people are absolutely dirt poor. So, yeah, in, in most countries of the world today, you find some very rich people and some very poor people. So that's why the GDP, the way we work it out is we imagine we take all the money off everyone and share it out evenly that gives us an idea but yes i mean there, there's millionaires there's superstars there's you know there's football stars and uh singing stars and uh of course the the president is pretty rich and all that kind of stuff uh high paid lawyers and judges and things like that yeah oh avocados as well of course that's our, our main ingredient that goes into our guacamole here yeah hmm. there we go uh <laughs> thank you beth and chili con carne translates to chili with meat yes meaty chili mm. Uh, traditionally in Mexico, um, especially in their more spicy food like chili, uh, a key ingredient would be chocolate, because of course chocolate comes uh, from Mexico, uh, and maybe a little bit further south as well. But the Mexica, the Aztecs, the Mayans before them, they were big on chocolate. They invented it, or they discovered it in the cocoa beans. And now, of course, I imagine some of you like chocolate, maybe. Just imagine if we never got to Mexico. There would be no chocolate at all. Weird. Oh, anyway, hmm. just got caught in a chocolate day daydream then. Ooh. Um, now here we are. We're going to have a look at some music. Um, 
Mexico is famous for lots of different kinds of music, um, lots of Spanish influences, as you can imagine, because you know, the, the originally the people were from Spain. Um, and so this is one of the more famous types of band. They call them mariachi bands. And a mariachi group is traditionally a group of men, but nowadays you can have female groups too, um, or groups that are a mix of men and women, who play acoustic uh, instruments, so instruments without electricity plugged into them. Um, and they generally play in like town squares or centers. And it's usually, not always, but usually pretty jolly music. Uh, you can see here the main uh, uh, instruments are guitars, the accordion, violins or fiddles, and trumpets. And sometimes those trumpets can change uh, in size and shape, you know. But that's our, that's our basic mariachi lineup. Uh, a group of people playing instruments and singing jolly songs. Um, now, I picked these guys in particular because they have the traditional Mexican hat called the sombrero, which keeps the sun, that hot Mexican sun, out of your eyes. So that's pretty useful. A bit like my hat, but more cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brilliant. Amanda says one of them is da 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 Well, that's brilliant that you managed to type that, Amanda. Very good. I'm impressed. <laughs> But yes, that's that's the famous one, isn't it? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, oh, and Clem and or Gilly are saying they play the violin. That's very cool. Yeah, maybe you could join a mariachi band. There are some mariachi bands in Britain. I know I, I was listening to radio the other day and an all female mariachi band from London came on uh, playing some funky music. So there you go. Yeah, you, you could join a mariachi band with your fiddle It'd be good. or your violin. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, now, something which is also pretty famous. I know a couple of people have already mentioned in the chat today. Uh, um, the Day of the Dead. Ooh, kind of spooky, but kind of cool at the same time. Um, and this sort of ties into the religion of Mexico. So uh, Mexico is traditionally a Roman Catholic country. Ah, yeah, like the film Coco Freya, that's it. Or the Book of Life. Yes, both those films are all about the Day of the Dead, aren't they, in some way. But yeah, it's a, it's a Catholic country, a Roman Catholic country made up of Roman Catholic Christians. But before the Roman Catholics arrived from Europe, from Spain, um, the people in the Americas, in Mexico, the Mexica, the Aztecs, uh, they believed in all kinds of different gods and goddesses. Um, and death was kind of important in uh Mexico in Aztec times. There was lots of human sacrifice where prisoners mainly, but sometimes just people who volunteered, would be killed to make the gods happy. And so there were plenty of like gods of death, which were a bit scary looking. Um, lots of them had like animal features and skulls for heads. Um, and of course, when the Roman Catholics came over, that's a type of Christianity, they brought with them their own um, kind of skull based uh, art and things because uh, skulls are pretty big in, in Roman Catholic uh, religion uh, you know. um, and so they they put them back they put them together um, and we end up with this really interesting time it's the time of Halloween uh, well just after it's the first and second of November the day of the dead technically I know that means days of the dead it should be two days the first day, the 1st of November, is all about remembering dead children, which sounds kind of morbid, but in some ways it's really, really nice. Because, of course, lots of children die all over the world of illnesses or accidents and things. And so November the 1st is a day when people can remember those children in their families or, or, or their community who have died uh, too young. And so there's lots of candles lit and offerings given, and they make these beautiful shrines. Um, where they can use photographs nowadays or back in the day pictures you know paintings they can put up photographs of the of the children and give them little things and that that day is kind of you know a little bit more a little bit more sad than the day that comes next because the 2nd of november is the full on day of the dead for everyone and that's where you remember all the people who have died so the children but also the old people and everyone in between um, and it's traditional to dress up in sometimes spooky skeleton clothing, like this cool woman here who's got her face painted up. That's not what she normally looks like, guys, if you were wondering. Mm -hmm. um, lots of bright colours, lots of parades, and lots of dancing, and mariachi bands, and good food, and people remember the dead. But it's not in a sad way. It's not like 
everyone stands around very quietly and goes, oh dear, we're very sad. No, they decide to have a party because of course, where are their dead people? These people are Catholics. So of course, the dead people are in heaven. It's all good. So we can dance for them and we can sing for them. Um, oh, Amada, yes, you volunteer to die. Yeah, but some people in Mexico did volunteer. If the God needed pleasing, some people would say, okay, I'll do it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go there. Yes. Uh, Amani says, or maybe they're in hell. Uh, yeah, but you wouldn't dance for that. <laughs> so dressing up as demons and devils and, and skeletons seems a bit scary, but of course they do it in a really colourful, bright way. So it's kind of like they're saying, ha ha, we're not afraid of you, devil. We're not afraid of you, skeletons or spooky ghosties. Instead, we're going to dance and we're going to sing and our people are in heaven, so it doesn't matter. Ha ha, can't get us. Uh, that's the kind of attitude. Um, uh, so it's kind of a, a fun time, a bit like Halloween is here, I guess. Yeah. But I think in, a, in Mexico, it's got that, you know, in this country, a lot of people do Halloween and it's not really a religious thing anymore. It's more like a let's go out and have fun thing. Um, in Mexico, it still is very much an important part of religion for most people. Yes. Um, uh, Bethan says it seemed way nicer than Halloween. It, it's, it's very similar. It definitely seems like more fun. I, I, I think... The idea of, because remember, in Mexico in October, it's kind of warm, kind of dry. Um, you haven't got to worry about it being cold and dark like you do in England. So you could go out and have a nice party in the sunshine, which sounds way better to me. Yeah. If I was going to dress up as a spooky skeleton, I'd want to do it in the daytime. I'd want to do it in the sunshine. <laughs> um, oh, this is cool. That Leon plays the violin too. That's very cool. Hey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I like this. Mystery has asked, what date is it? It's the 1st of November and the 2nd of November, uh, but it is definitely the Day of the Dead instead of the Day of the Dead. Yeah. Oh, and Nico plays piano. That's cool. Um, the only downside with the piano in a mariachi band is it's not portable enough, um, unless maybe you, you wanted to push your piano around the streets of, of Mexican cities. Um, if you had a really small one, you could do it, maybe. <laughs> Um, I suppose you could do it nowadays with like a, a, a little electronic keyboard. You could do that, can you? Knock it, play away. But of course, if you do it in a room, you can play the piano too. <laughs> um, oh, well. Oh, well. You'll be right. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Ah, oh, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, that's the Day of the Dead. That's, uh, um, uh, who is it? Mystery has said Cinco de Mayo. That's the, that's the Spanish name for the Day of the Dead. Now, I thought we'd finish up today. We've only got a few minutes left. We're just a little look at those Aztecs. We've mentioned them a few times. Um, and they are, well, one of the traditional groups of people who lived in Mexico. Now, very sadly, when the Europeans came to Mexico, Columbus came over in 1492. Uh, that was his first mission and is the first European discovery of the Americas. Um, he never actually went to the USA. People say, oh, Columbus discovered America. He discovered the Americas, but he never went to what we can now call the USA. So he never really discovered America. Um, he did go to Mexico, though. Um, he went to lots of islands in the Caribbean, and then he went to Mexico. Um, and what he would have seen there is loads of you know, big temples, uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of huge groups of people uh, not all the same, because the Mexica were just one tribe. There were lots of other tribes around. And to be honest, they didn't like the Mexica much. The Mexica would tend to be a bit dangerous. Uh, they were always starting wars and asking people to give them money. Um, and they had a very different idea of religion than lots of the other tribes did. For instance, once uh, the Mexica, the Aztecs, they wanted to show a fellow chief how much they respected him. So they had a great big feast. And... Halfway through the feast, in comes one of the Mexica, the Aztec priests, wearing a disgusting sort of costume. And the chief is like, what is that 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 guy's wearing? And they say, oh, because we love you so much, we decided to kill your daughter. And now this guy's wearing her skin. It's like, what? That's disgusting. You're freaky, you Mexicas. And that, of course, started a war, as you could imagine. That's what would happen. But the Aztecs didn't get it. They thought they were being really kind. They're like, oh, we've sent your, girl, your, we've sent your daughter to the gods. Hooray, aren't we kind? And the other guy is like, no. Uh, no, you're not kind. That's horrible. Get out, of, get out of my kingdom. So 
the, the, there were loads of different groups. They weren't all quite like the Aztecs, but they all believed in different gods and goddesses. Um, sadly, when the Mexicans did come, uh, when, sorry, the Spanish did come, they brought with them disease. And so the Aztecs, the Maya, all the other tribes, they kind of got sick and died, um, which is why nowadays there are still some people related to the Mexica, but most people in Mexico uh, are related to the Spanish instead. There you go. Hmm. Um, yeah, Amana says the guy next to the temple looks like a chicken man. He does look a bit chickeny. He's supposed to be a snake bird man. That's what he is. Uh, this is Quetzalcoatl, one of the most important gods. And yeah, he's supposed to be snaky with feathers and wings. So yeah, he looks kind of cool. Yeah. Um, the Day of the Dead is on the 1st and 2nd of November. There you go, mystery. November the 1st and November the 2nd. Yeah. All right. So. Um, Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, uh, it's oh, I see. Oh, am I thinking of something different with the Cinco de Mayo? Oh, I'm not sure. I'll have a. I'll look that up, running over. Thank you. Mm. Yes, I thought that was the name of the Day of the Dead, but I'll check. Cool. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed Mexico. Join me next week when we're going to Nigeria. Ooh, very different place, but just as cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye.